Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we are in the New King James Version of the Bible, Psalm 39. This is a prayer for wisdom and forgiveness. This comes in handy if you are just at a place where you feel like you uh, just don't like some things that's going on. Um, You need to exhibit some self-control. Um, you're hoping someone will apologize, but most likely they may not. Um, you're hoping that they may forgive you for some wrong that you committed, or, um, you are attempting to forgive them and maybe you're struggling with that. So I suggest that after this reading that you do take these scriptures and pray them back to the Lord where they apply to your situation. And so let us begin Psalm 39. I said, I will guard my ways, lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle, while the wicked are before me. I was mute with silence. I held my peace, even from good, and my sorrow was stirred up. My heart was hot within me. While I was musing, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Lord, make me to know my ends and what is the measure of my days, that I may know how frail I am. Indeed, you have made my days as handbreadths, and my age is as nothing before you. Certainly, every man at his best state is but vapor. Surely, every man walks about like a shadow. Surely, they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I did not open my mouth because it was you who did it. Remove your plague from me. I am consumed by the blow of your hand. When with rebukes you correct man for iniquity, you make his beauty melt away like a moth. Surely every man is vapor. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Do not be silent at my tears, for I am a stranger with you, a sojourner as all my fathers were. Remove your gaze from me that I may regain strength before I go away and am no more. Now, as we know that uh, there was much going on in Psalm and we know that David, he was running from Saul, so he had a lot of enemies And he was often praying uh, to the Lord about his enemies. And so you may have recently been in a conflict with someone. Or maybe there has been some problems going on for months or even years. You could have done some things far worse than maybe you already did. Or maybe you did nothing. Like the psalmist says, I held my peace even from good. And my sorrow was stirred up. And if that's the case, then you continue to pray and you ask the Lord to just move on your heart, move on your mind, your spirit and so forth to continue to do good. You may have already confessed sin and changed your mind about a situation. And that is a good start. Now it's just a matter of being obedient, listening to the Lord and doing what he wills but you don't have a lot of time and this is why it is so crucial to do what is right to do what it is that God wants you to do because according to 39 4 the psalmist says Lord make me to know my end this is a serious prayer if you say this prayer you're going to feel like you need to get some things done sooner rather than later I have said similar prayers in the past when I knew that my grandmother was in her last days. And I will tell you, time speeds up for you. 39.4, Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days. And for some people, you may have to pray this sort of prayer concerning them. Lord, make them to know their end and what is the measure of their days that they may know how frail they are. You see, some folks need to know this. 
because they're living as if they got plenty of time to get some things accomplished. They're living as if they got plenty of time to say what they need to say, do what they want to do, and all of this other stuff. They feel like they got plenty of time to act on God's will. And the truth of the matter is, is that we do not have plenty of time. It may feel like it on some days because some days are slower than others. But the truth of the matter is, is that we don't have a lot of time to be going around the mulberry bush with people. We don't have a lot of time to be procrastinating on issues. We don't have a lot of time to be sitting back thinking about everything that others have done wrong to us. We don't have a lot of time to make wrongs right. We just don't. So if you are going to say a prayer like this, you have to recognize that things need to get done. And there is no more excuse making. There is no more running from the truth. There is no more wasting time with people who don't care, don't like, don't love you, have proven themselves over and over again. God gives men and women and children years with some folks. Years. They have ample opportunity to do what is right during that time that they are with you. They have ample opportunity to... Uh, apologize they have opportunity to work with you to give you a hug to give you a kiss the time is there but then there comes a point where God cuts off that time and when he cuts off that time folks have to deal with whatever they have in front of them they have to deal with whomever they have in front of them the Christian is not meant to be in everybody's lives. Can I say that again? The Christian is not meant to be in everybody's lives. And if there are those around you pressuring you to be a part of their world and you know that God is releasing you, you bid them farewell and you keep working toward whatever it is that God has called upon your life. As I've said before, we cannot take everyone with us. We are on a limited time. We have days that are measured by the one true God. And this is why I pray the kind of prayer for some of those that I see in the spirit. Lord, make them to know their end and what is their measure or what is the measure of their days that they may know how frail they are. Too many people walk around here thinking that they are strong and that they are going to live for a long time. And I'm sorry to break the news. That is not the truth for a lot of people. They may wish to live on this planet for a long time, but a lot of folks, especially the seniors, are getting down to the wire. So if they can't get things right in this life, why do so many think they're going to be okay in the next life? Why do so many think that they're going to end up in heaven? If they couldn't accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, listen and obey in this life, why would they think that there's a place for them in heaven in the next one? They are so deceived. So I'm thanking the Heavenly Father for His wisdom. And I'm thanking Him for the ability to forgive. And it doesn't always come in the way that we want. If someone has reached a place where they know that they've done wrong and they're asking the Lord please let them know that I do forgive them and that I'm okay with them and I'm all right then God will make it so you will experience the peace in your spirit even if you never sat down and had a powwow with that individual or group I have peace of mind knowing that God is with me I have peace of mind knowing that we go through many things in our lives, and oftentimes we mean no harm. How people view things, what their personal perception is, and so forth. 
That has nothing to do with us. And sometimes people are going to try to hold your feet over the fire, so to speak, and we don't allow them to abuse us just because they have their personal qualms with us. That is unacceptable. Their words cannot touch us. Their hands cannot touch us. And whatever power that they thought that they could wield over us, that is no more. Because when you are walking with the Lord, he takes all of that from you. But some folks like to hold on to those sorts of things. Because they unfortunately feel some type of peace in toxic relationships. They have allowed their minds and their bodies and their spirits to hold on to some folks for far too long. And that's not what we're supposed to be doing when these people are children of darkness. We speak God's word and we keep it moving no matter what their titles are. So allow the Lord to hear your prayer today. Take these scriptures, pray them back to the Lord. Lord, I need hope. I need hope in you. I need you to deliver me from all my transgressions. Lord Jesus, do not make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I did not open my mouth because it was you who did it. So when the opportunity came and you probably later on said, oh, I should have said this. I should have done that. That was my chance and all of that. No, no, no. Why? Because the psalmist David, he recognized he was mute. He didn't open his mouth because it was God who did it. Be free in knowing that, saint. And pray, remove your plague if you're experiencing something from the Lord. Remove your plague from me. I am consumed by the blow of your hand. You may be going through some consequences as a result of sin. Or maybe some backlash from some people. Maybe God... It's taking you through some type of fiery trial to teach you some lessons in life. It doesn't have to be something bad, even though the enemy, you know, wants to convince people of that sort of thing. Not every trial that we go through is bad or it's as a result of things we said or did and all of this. So whatever God's rebuke is, whatever lesson there is to be learned, we ask the Lord that if it is getting to the point where we can't take it any longer, please remove your plague from me. I'm consumed by the blood of your hand. When with rebukes you correct man for iniquity, right? Maybe you are guilty of sin. You make his beauty melt away like a moth, you see. That's why some people age prematurely, too, because they have gone through so much sin. Sometimes aging isn't just a, a process, you know, um, but it is because of sin, because of wild living, because of stress, because of, uh, you know, putting toxins in one's body and so forth. But we already know that beauty melts away very quickly. So to do things to speed it up is even worse. And then of course, in time, a man dies. It's like he's here today, gone tomorrow, like vapor, like fog, like steam. It's here and then it evaporates. So I thank you so much, as always, for taking the time out to listen. And may God bless you as well as those you love.